Amen. Glad to be in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, you can only the Lord in church. You could be in the prayer closet, be driving down the car. Amen. No matter where you are, you can be in his presence. And that's what I desire, to be in his presence. Find myself in his presence. If you got your Bibles with you this morning, turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 16. We'll start reading with verse 22. Uh, Becky, I may go down to verse 26. But I was reading this passage of scripture, um, I believe it was this past week, and some things stood out to me and I want to go with it this morning. The book of Acts chapter 16, verse 22, this is speaking of Paul and Silas. And the multitude arose up together against them, and the magistrates rent their clothes off and commanded to beat them. <coughs> and when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, trust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword, that he might have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. And uh, I think it was supposed to stop at verse 26, but it's all right. <laughs> and Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do not harm yourself, for you all are here. Amen. I... I read this passage of scripture, and in my notes in my scripture, I put, uh, no matter what happens, keep praying, keep praising, and then watch the earth shake, the doors open, and chains be broken. So what I want to tell you this morning, amen, in every storm, in every battle that you're going through, learn to praise Him. Learn to pray and to praise Amen. Even when you don't understand it, you don't know why. Amen. Learn to pray and praise God. Because in those times of your storms, if you learn to pray and to praise Him, you will begin to see the earth begin to shake and the bonds be broken and the prison doors open. Amen. Even when you've been beaten, you've been stripped, you've been broken, and everything's taken from you, learn to praise Him and watch God begin to move in your behalf. I mean, those are a lot of things we go through we don't understand. Why am I going through this? Why am I fighting this storm? Why am I going through this battle? Why am I having this sickness? Why am I having this health issues? Why am I having this financial trouble? Amen. But I want you to learn this morning to pray and to praise Him in those times that you don't understand. Learn to pray and to praise God. And then you will eventually begin to see some things happen. I want you to notice something here. Let's go up to verse 16, if you will, Becky. I want you to notice something here, that this was not the first time they began to pray. For in verse 16 it says, and it came to pass as they went to what? Prayer. So it teaches us that when they went in the storm, that's when they, they didn't start praying when they were in the jailhouse and bound, but they were praying before they were bound and in prison. Amen. So something we didn't learn from this passage of Scripture. Amen. That we've got to have a prayer life and a praise life. Amen. Before you enter into a storm. Amen. So I want to encourage you this morning. Amen. To find some time throughout your day and talk to Jesus. Amen. Have a prayer life with Him. Have a personal relationship with Jesus. And throughout the day, find yourself just praising Him. Amen. And for no other reason, because you woke up this morning and you want to praise Him for waking you up this morning. Amen. You can look around and see things that blind people can't see. So I want to praise Him and thank Him. Amen. I can find something to praise God for. Amen. So even if I'm not in a storm and I'm not going through a trial, not in a whirlwind in my life, I want to learn to pray and talk to Jesus and to praise Him when everything's going all right. 
See, a lot of people, they wait till they're in the storm till they call out to God and they say, God, I need help from you. But if I can learn to call out to God before I enter the storm, amen, I guarantee you God will be there, amen, right when I need him, when I call upon him. So I need to learn to have a prayer life before Amen, I go into the storm. I need to learn to praise Him before, amen, I go through the storm. I like something in the book of Job, chapter 38, verse 1. You don't have to turn to it, but sometimes it's right in the middle of your storm is when God begins to speak to you. Job 38, 1, it says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said. That's when God began to speak to him. Out of the whirlwind. Amen. Sometimes we may be in the middle of a whirlwind. Amen. Everything's tossing to and fro. And we can't see amen any way around us. And we don't know what's going on. around us, if we're not in tune for God, amen, before the storm, and not learning to pray and to praise God before the storm, you may miss God speaking to you in the storm, because you hear every other voice is around you, and you can't hear God, amen, so again, I encourage you this morning, amen, spend time talking with God, and praising Him, whether you're in a storm or not, because when you're in the storm, if you have an ear to hear, God will speak to you, right in the middle of the whirlwind and so I want to learn to praise him when everything's going good amen I want to praise him when everything's not going so good Paul and Silas go up to verse Judges chapter 6 verse 13 Paul and Silas may have questioned God why I'm in this jail why am I chained up amen but like Gideon he questioned God amen said and Gideon said unto my God uh, to uh Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if, you ever said if, if God be with us, then why is all these befallen us? Why, and where are the miracles which our fathers did tell us of? Saying, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? Amen. And how the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Sometimes, amen, we may want to ask God why. Am I going through this? Amen. But like Paul and Silas, they may have asked God why, but even if they didn't understand it, they still found themselves praying and singing praises unto God. Amen. And many times I, I may question God myself, and I, and I, I, but, but if I remember in those times, amen, God may see a potential in you. You see, Gideon said, God called Gideon thou mighty man of valor. But God said, if you, Gideon said, if you're with us, then why is all this happening to us? Amen. God may see something in you, and then God may allow you to go through a storm because God sees a potential of you being the mighty man and mighty woman of God. Amen. So I want to look, amen, and say that I don't, may not understand, but I know God has a plan. Look at somebody, tell them, hold on. Amen, in the middle of your storm, because God has a plan. Amen, I may not understand it, I may not know why. Amen, but God just may be seeking for that mighty man or mighty woman inside of you. Amen, to bring it out. Amen, and send deliverance, right? In the middle of the whirlwind, right in the middle of the storm. Amen, I've got to remember God has a plan. Amen. God's plan may be greater than my plan. Amen. It's greater than anything. Amen. But I want to, God has a plan. Another interesting thing here at verse 18, Acts 16, verse 18. in the name of Jesus to come out of her and he came out that same hour. There was a slave girl that was following Paul and Silas and she was saying amen during Paul when she was walking with Paul and Silas following them behind them. Amen. The, the, the girl was saying amen these men are showing you the uh, holy men of the great of the holy God showing you the way. Amen. She, there was a little slave girl 
and her masters made money off of her because she could tell future. She was a fortune teller. Amen. And she was a slave, and the masters made money off of her because she could tell the future. And, and, and the, uh, but then God steps in and messes up their plans. Yeah. Amen. So we've got to remember, number one, amen, we've got to spend time in prayer and learn to sing and to praise God, amen, when we're not going through a storm, before the storm. And when we do that, it will cause the enemy to come after you. Amen. If the devil sees you praising God and, and, and singing praises to God, even when you're not in a storm, that makes the devil mad. I mean, see, Paul and Silas, they were going to prayer. Amen. As they normally did on a daily basis, they would go to prayer. Amen. And then there was this long slave girl that was following them. Amen. Because it, and it made the enemy mad. And three, I, we believe this, we need to get annoyed or grieved in our spirit like Paul did when the enemy comes and following us. Amen. And we need to start calling upon the name of Jesus and casting out the spirit. Amen. And it may cause us to be stripped, to beaten, amen, and thrown into prison and chained up. Amen. But even within, they continue to pray and to sing praises unto God. And I thought to myself, well, why was Paul grieved? Because the Bible says that the slave girl was saying these, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. And I thought, why would Paul be grieved at this? And I read some commentaries and I read some different things. And they say that the original Greek says this. The, these, the woman was saying, these men of the uh, uh, servants of the Most High God who are telling you a way. Instead of the way, it was the way to salvation. In other words, he's one of the ways. These guys are telling you of one of the ways, amen, to salvation. And Paul and, and the others, disciples, had already established, amen, that there were in the message that it's Jesus Christ, Him crucified, and He is the only way, amen, to the, to, to the Father. He is the only way, amen, to heaven. There's no other way to heaven except through the door, and that door is Jesus. And that's what they taught, amen. And, 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 they, and, and when I read about it, Amen. Biblical teaching to the heresy of pluralism, that there was more than one God, more than one way to heaven. Amen. Turning Jesus, I mean, from the unique Son of God to the one of many gods, one of many ways. And the early church um, apostles, again, had faithfully proclaimed that there was no other salvation except through Jesus. He was the only way to heaven. Acts chapter 13, verse 40, 43. I read this uh, last week and it said, Now the congregation was broken up, and many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking of them, persuaded them that they continued in the grace of God. One word that stuck out to me there uh, that I don't remember reading, I know I did, is proselytes. And I, I said, Well, what's a proselyte? I looked it up. A proselyte is uh, uh, somebody that they knew convert, especially someone recently switched from one religion to another. So they were proselytes, say, amen. Uh, and they, they were Jews and that were proselytes. They switched from their religion to believing that Jesus was the only way. And how this woman, the slave girl, was following Paul and Silas and saying, gee, they're showing you one way to heaven. One way, amen. It was through Jesus, amen. But they had, Paul was grieved in his spirit because he, there was a mixed, uh, uh, they was confusing people. She was confusing people, saying there was more than one way, when there only is one way. Now we have, and I believe our souls should be grieved, because now we have in our nation many churches and many people saying that Jesus is not the only way. There, there are other ways to heaven. Mega church preachers are saying this. I've heard them say it with my own ears. Movie stars are saying it that are proclaimed Christians. Amen. And, and, and they're saying there's other ways to heaven. There's other places. Amen. Things that we can do besides going through Jesus to make it to heaven. And I believe our souls should be grieved when we hear these things. I, I, I read this and I thought it was interesting. A uh, survey that was done back in 2021 by the Probe Ministry Surveys. 
and they, uh, they, they surveyed ages from the ages of 18 to 39. They interviewed 3,106 individuals, which of 717 of them proclaimed to be born-again Christians. And the poll questions they asked were, uh, what they asked the people that said they were born again, and they, whether they believed Jesus was the only way. And I thought this was interesting, from the ages 18 to 39, over 60% of the born-again Christians believe that Jesus was not the only way to heaven. The survey they did, 60% of born-again Christians believe that Jesus was not the only way to heaven. They followed by Buddha and Mohammed. They said what other pathways to enter into heaven. But that's contrary to the word of God. Amen. Acts chapter 4 says there's no other uh, name under heaven wherein men must be saved. Amen. Except through the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 3.11 and says there's no other foundation that can be laid that it's already been laid through Jesus Christ. Amen. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on Him Amen. Shall have eternal life. There was another survey I found by the Pew Survey uh, research survey back in 2021. They said that 39% of Americans believe that atheists would have an opportunity to go to heaven after they die. And again, this is contrary to the Bible. John 3, uh, 14, 16, Jesus said, I am the way and I'm the truth and, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except by me. And Timothy, 1 Timothy 2, 5, for there was one God and one mediator between God and men, and that man Christ Jesus. And I thought it was interesting that more than 60% of born-again Christians in America between the ages of 6, 18 and 39 believe that Buddha, Mohammed, and Jesus were all valid reasons to get to heaven. 60%. Over 30% of those same people believe that Jesus sinned while he was on the earth. And I thought, that's crazy, amen. And they said that there was a, a striking decline from 10 years earlier when they did the uh, uh, survey. Um, the, the people that held basically Bible view beliefs that Jesus lived without sin and that Jesus is the only way to heaven, amen, it, it, it dropped nearly 25% in 10 years. 25% in 10 years. Pro ministry uh, says that the religious views and practices from the survey, the, the study showed that saw the drop in biblical, uh, basic biblical reviews, saying that Jesus never sinned and he is the only way to salvation. It was in 2010, it was 47%, dropped down to 25%, amen, 10 years later. I thought this is crazy, amen. So the percentage of born again Christians. And a biblical worldview, amen, have a cut in half in over a decade. They did a study from those uh, 10 years ago, it's between 18 and 29, and they did it the same study 10 years ago, those same age group from 30 to 39, amen, had declined in those 10 years. This means that not every born again Christian believes that Jesus was a sinless, lived a sinless life, and that Jesus is the only way to heaven. One man said this, that pastors and churches, leaders, just can't assume any longer that members of the church or a Christian organization have biblical worldviews. Amen. The basic that Jesus is the only way to heaven, and that he lived a sinless life on earth, that just the basics, amen, proclaimed by born-again Christians, and many of them, 60%, believe, amen, there's other ways to heaven. They did another survey in 2024 and it jumped from 60% from 2021 to 2024 to 70%, amen, of the people they surveyed, amen. And it should be disturbing, amen, to think there's that many people, amen, that say they're born again Christians, to say that Jesus is not the only way, amen. And they, they, they uh, should be only one way to heaven and that's through Jesus. And we need to be grieved when we hear this. Or, or, or our spirit should be grieved, amen, like Paul, amen, grieved, and he cast that spirit out in Jesus' name. So I believe, one man said they believed a lot of it because the kids at that age, the young people, were so 
uh, involved in social media. They were so involved in their phones and social media. Amen. That's what switched their minds to thinking. Amen. That Jesus was not the only way. I'm telling you this morning, if we focus on social media, amen, it's too much, amen, it will get our minds thinking, amen, that Jesus may not be the only way. Because we hear so many other faiths, amen, of good people, amen, that say that Jesus is not the only way. But he, and, 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 I've, and I've read it and I've seen it, amen. And one man wrote this, one of the most dangerous messages people are promoting today is that God is love and that nobody's going to hell. That's a dangerous place to live. Amen. Not everyone's going to heaven. Amen. Unless they go through the door, and that door is Jesus. Some people believe that they're going to heaven because they're good. Some, it doesn't matter which God you serve as long as you serve one of them. It's what they say. And, and, and this man wrote, Although Oprah Winfrey amen, claims to be a born-again Christian, she tells the world there's many ways to heaven. He continued to write, right, and he said, the leader of one of the largest churches in the country, Joe Ostring, amen, says, and I heard him say it myself, well, I'm not sure that Jesus is the only way. I believe he is, but that's what he said on national TV. Amen. We must worship and believe that the God of the Bible, amen, Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Amen. John 14, 16, and again he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except by me. Acts 4, 12, again, there is no other name given unto among men where men must be saved the truth of the name of Jesus Christ. John 3, 18, whosoever believeth in Jesus is not condemned, but whosoever believeth uh, 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 stands condemned already because he believeth not in the name of God. So keep telling people, amen, about Jesus. Keep telling them, amen, and keep preaching and keep proclaiming that Jesus is the only way. There's no other religion going to get you to heaven, amen, except through the door named Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage you this morning, amen, to keep praying and to keep praising. Amen. Make it a habit in your life. If there's a habit, amen, you need to make it's talking to Jesus. If there's a habit you need to have, amen, is singing praises unto God. Amen. Making a habit. Amen. When you wake up in this morning, in the morning, that you say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. And begin to praise Him and spend a little time talking to Him. On your way to work, or in, your, in, in your car, amen, and you're by yourself. Amen. To make it a habit. Amen. Just to talk to Jesus. Amen. And quote a scripture. Amen. And sing praises in the hymn. Amen. I want to learn to make it a habit to praise God and to sing praises in the hymn, whether I'm going through a storm or not. For when I face the storm, when I'm in the whirlwind, that's when I'll hear from God. I read something else that I like and I wrote it down. And I didn't write this. I wish I did because it was good. But they said this, in the Bible, it rained 40 days and 40 nights, but day 41 came and the rain stopped. Moses committed murder and hid in the desert for 40 years. Year 41 came and God called him to rescue Israel. When Moses went to the mountain for 40 days, but on day 41 he received the Ten Commandments. The Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, but year 41, and they walked into the promised land. Goliath taunted Israel for 40 days, but day 41 David slew him. Jonah preached a message of repentance to Nineveh for 40 days, and on day 41 God stopped the plan to destroy them. Jesus fasted and tempted for 40 days, when on day 41, the devil fled. After his resurrection, Jesus appeared unto his disciples for 40 days, but on day 41, he ascended into heaven. Amen. All to say this, don't quit. Amen. The rain will stop. The giant will fall. Amen. You will enter into your promised land. Don't give up on day 40, because day 41 is coming. Amen. Don't give up. Amen. On day 40 because day 41 is coming. Amen. Jesus is your comfort in the middle of the whirlwind. Jesus is your comfort in the middle of your storm. Amen. I want to end with this. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 13. For all your mothers and happy Mother's Day. Amen. For Isaiah 66 verse 13. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you. 
and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Jesus is your comforter. Like a mother that comforts the child. Amen. Jesus is your comforter. So in the midst of your storm, if I've already created a habit of praying, amen, talking to Jesus and praying and praising Him, and when I get in my storm, amen, I won't quit my habit, but I'll still get that habit of praying and talking and singing praises unto God. And when I do that, the earth is going to shake. The prison doors are going to open. The chains are going to be broken. So lift your hands in there this morning. Say, I want to stay in the plan of God and learn to pray and to praise Him even in the storm. Oh, Jesus, how I love, well, how I love. calling your, your name, oh, Jesus, Jesus, my Jesus, oh, every day. Your name is the same. I call on Jesus. Oh, Jesus. How I love. Calling your name. Oh, Jesus. My Jesus. Oh, every day. Your name is the same. When my troubles surround me. And I'm in despair, Lord, you told me, when all my problems have just begun, I'm not going to worry anymore, because he's already won. I call on Jesus, oh, Jesus, how I love, call I remember a time I felt so all alone When I needed Jesus All I had to do was call I call him in the morning I call him late at night But when I get down on my knees Jesus makes it right I call on Jesus Oh, Jesus When I needed Jesus, all I had to do was call. I call him in the morning. I can call him late at night. When I get down on my knees, Jesus makes it right. I call on Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 